Hello, it's a pleasure to share with you the latest information about the Mary's stents, which are the bioabsorbable stents. And I am Dr. Praveen Chandra from India, from New Delhi. And it's a pleasure for me to share this all information, which was recently presented in the PCR. So, Mary's is basically a bioabsorbable stent, as you already know and uh, we now have the two year and three year outcomes of this uh, very important device which uh, we all are looking at and probably it is going to help us in the future so why do we need this kind of a stent because now we have started getting this information much more that at the end of five years 10 years 15 years and even up to 17 years that is incidence of restenosis and stent thrombosis. Why does this happen? Because there is a permanent implant material which is inside the arteries. So probably that is one of the reasons with of course polymer which is also sitting on the stent for the entire life. So based on this the idea was generated that if we have something which does not leave anything behind would open up future treatment possibilities with no or probably very less incidence of complications of strength thrombosis and restenosis. And of course, we started getting very uh, promising results from the BVS data which came from uh, around the world, from US, from Europe and from India. A large number of these patients were treated with BVS and the, it was very encouraging to start with but later on we started getting some negative outcomes in these patients and especially if we look at the data which came from the absorbed four-year outcomes when this device the BVS device was really put into question which showed that there is incidence of complications of strain thrombosis and late lumen loss in these patients. Now this was a very good learning point for all of us to understand why all this was happening and whether we need any more iteration or any more new development on this possibility where there is no implant which leaves behind. So when we analyzed the whole information and uh, started thinking that what should be the best second generation BRS which is bioresolvable scaffold and then we realized that if we reduce the strut thickness which will in turn lead to faster degradation and probably less scaffold thrombosis and a size matrix which is wider which can actually go on to different morphologies and then of course we will be able to treat a large lesion spectrum rather than putting the same device in various kind of lesion subsets and lesion lengths. And the last thing was that you know this device which was the first generation device actually needed to be put on a refrigerator and the shelf life was not good. So all those problems were happening. So we needed to have a device which had regular cath lab storage conditions. So based on this, this device was developed, which is known as the Mary's 100 stent, which is the second generation BRS. And what it had in terms of change was the strut thickness, which was then 150 microns was brought to 100 microns. The geometry was hybrid compared to a multi-linked stand design platform and the crossing profile became much lesser from 1.4 to 1.2. So which means the reach in, you know, uh, and the uh, possibility of putting the stent in difficult anatomy was possible. Of course, also to see whether the stent is at the right position or not, well expanded or not. Now this has three markers on each end compared to a pair of two markers at opposite ends in the absorbed BRS. So this was the change which was done and based on this, this stent can be stored in normal cath lab temperature. There is no need for refrigeration in this uh, device which is the Mary's 100. And then we started looking at the initial information. Uh, this was from the animal data, sh looking at whether it works, the, the, the idea works or not. And when we found out that at three years, the stent was completely gone and this was the, you know, very, very promising. And based on this, 
we started using this uh, device in various lesion subsets and uh, this is the data which we have now which is published and it is the data of Mary's one study which was done with 108 patients clinical follow-up is done up to three years and multi-modality imaging with intravascular ultrasound and OCT has been done in 37 patients with angiographic follow-up so that is the information uh, which I'm going to share with you in much more details and those patients who were treated were completely you know real life patients with almost 30 percent of them being diabetics and the, the reference vessel diameter was 2.75 to 3.5 millimeters and lengths the lesion length being less than 20 millimeters we started they started looking at the you know the safety endpoints the, the primary endpoint was uh, mace at six months and the secondary endpoint was device and procedure success and scaffold thrombosis in these patients. And we are following these patients on a yearly basis to assess if any event happens at two years, three years, or four years. Core lab was in Sao Paulo, which was the cardiovascular research center. And these are the centers, as you can see here, uh, where the doctors participated and uh, completed 108 patients. Smoking uh, rate in these patients was 18% and almost 77% as usual is male patients in this subgroup and unstable angina and, and silent ischemia was about 50%. So the cumulative outcome up to three years follow up in terms of scaffold thrombosis was very, very you know, promising and no scaffold thrombosis up to three years in any of these patients has been recorded and uh, so it shows the sustained successful clinical outcome up to three years and if you look at the cumulative mace it is two percent which is at three years in 107 patients and tlr in two patients so if we compare it with the absorbed five-year cohort data which is 10 percent mace at three years compared to two percent in this study really showing that this strategy of making these structural changes in this 10 Mary's 100 may work quite well. And uh, looking at the late lumen loss and in the in scaffold six months late lumen loss was 0.13 at 24 months it is 0.24. Quite acceptable and of course will in turn lead to improved clinical outcomes. The covered struts are about 98 to 99% up to two years and the scaffold area remains constant and in fact improves at two years time going from 8.06 post procedure to 8.39 at two years. So this is the information which we have from this study and if you look at the volume obstruction again at two years the obstruction is far less than 10 percent. So that is the uh, the outcome of the study in terms of uh, lumen area and volume obstruction and uh, in many patients where we have followed them up and especially in diabetic patients at two years follow up with OCT it shows that the, uh, the intima is very less it is fully covered and the boxes are very much dissolved almost negligible as compared to the absorbed DRS data. So that is the you know comparison of absorbed versus Mary's you can see here that the box the size of the boxes are almost gone almost filled up compared to the empty boxes in the absorbed second generation compared to the second generation BRS. So uh, this study has opened the ways uh, for many other studies which are going on and are already getting completed in China in the United States and also in Europe which is the Mary's 100 global study with 2000 patients and of course very soon uh, we'll have uh, more information coming in from these studies and uh, we'll establish the real uh, use of this Mary's 100 device in our patients. So I can say that uh, very safely that it's a very low mace rate with Mary's 100 stents, zero scaffold thrombosis, low late lumen loss, complete strut coverage and very low percent volume obstruction at two years when IVAS was done in these patients. So these encouraging results of Mary's one are really taking us uh, uh, to make our decision 
to start using them in patients who are having uh, you know stenosis of various severities various uh, you know lengths which can be treated with the Mary's 100 stent so this is the <clears throat> information which is already published in the boundary in the euro intervention 2019 and uh, you can see the structure of the stent which is you know very very interesting that it has three markers at each ends which is embedded and of course the stent design is a hybrid stent design so i think with this uh, information we are all set on a new journey of using mary's 100 stents in our patients thank you